at the display board here at Mobile World Congress 2017 and uh, you have a new announcement. Yes, we have uh, previously you could take and use uh, like the LG G5 uh, and, the, and the V20 phones to export display port out mode out the bottom of the phone so you could get your video to connect it to an external display, television, projector, anything of that nature. And now uh, most recently at CES, Qualcomm announced that in their new 835 chip that they will integrate DisplayPort Alt Mode actually right into the chip itself. So any phones that use the 835 chip will have this same sort of capability to export DisplayPort video out the bottom of the Type-C connector on the bottom of the phone. Directly on the SoC. So no correct. need for a separate IC. So That's for example, correct. Windows Continuum, they were all using DisplayPort on a separate IC. There right? was a separate IC chip in these phones to allow that DisplayPort Alt Mode to come out of the phone. Uh, alt Mode of USB Type-C. That's like a right. standard right. Fun so functionality. So you get not only DisplayPort video, you also carry USB and power as well. So let's check out how it looks uh, when you connect it to a... This is a... All right. What kind of display is this? This is an LG display. This has a Type-C connector on it. It's one of the few monitors in the marketplace that does have Type-C. It's a certified DisplayPort device. So when you plug in the LG phone... All right. Then it's just going to automatically get over here. All right, here we go. And then you have a productivity, a huge display for right. your phone. Can we look on the, on the back? There's on a, even a... Sure. So on the back, because this monitor serves like a standard uh, USB hub, uh, it will actually power the phone right now, so it can charge the phone. But it also, because you're carrying USB, you can also on the back... If we, no, I don't know if we get back there. You can see we have a USB... Uh, plugged in, USB drive plugged into the back of the monitor. And that shows up on the phone? And that shows up on the phone. So, uh, USB And you could play uh, videos or whatever you'd have on that storage device uh, from your phone directly to, in this case, uh, an LG monitor. But uh, obviously you could connect this uh, using a, a DisplayPort alt mode to an HDMI adapter and use a television as well. You wouldn't have the hub capabilities, but you could still display your videos. That's a great thing about DisplayPort Alt Mode is it adapts to HDMI as well. So uh, if your display is HDMI, uh, you can easily convert this DisplayPort signal to an HDMI signal. So uh, right here, if we check on the back again, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, so this is a Type C right here. Type C connection. But it could have been a HDMI display. Correct. And it just works. We yeah. Well, you'd have an adapter, but yes, it would still work just the same. There would be an adapter. Right, so you'd have a display port. This is display port. Yeah. There would be an adapter that takes display port, turns it into HDMI. Then you'd connect the HDMI to the HDMI port on the back of the monitor or the television. There's no cable that can do all that. It needs to be an IC in the adapter box dock to do the to, to do, uh, to, to, HDMI. Do, to do HDMI. Yes, right. most of them are all active uh, active adapters. Is there any potential that we can do even more than one display with an Android device? Well, so the potential is in the future to take uh, out of your phone, basically set up a scenario where you could plug your phone into a dock, and the dock would have two outputs to two displays. So in theory, using DisplayPort Alt Mode and our compression called DSC uh, Display Stream Compression, you could actually drive two 4K displays from your phone. That's fantastic. This is going to be 10 nanometer. This is a crazy fast future uh, Snapdragon coming out. So it'll have so much performance that uh, uh, you, could, you could run displays like this, right? What kind of resolution are we looking at here? Here you're looking at, uh, this is a single display port cable using the latest uh, high bitrate 3. We're going to a Synaptics uh, docking device. So this is display port into the dock. We have two DisplayPort connectors on the dock, each driving a single 4K display at 60 hertz. So could you connect the phone through something like this to two 4K displays? Uh, in the future. It could be not, possible. Not currently, but in the future that is possible using compression. So that's uh, uh, DisplayPort 1.4? Those are DisplayPort 1.4 capabilities, yes. So uh, 1.4, you announced it last year, but now there's products? There's, there's products, and we have several in here that we can show you, this being one of them. And the other one is our ability to drive uh, 8K30 with a single cable using high bitrate 3, which 
as I said, uh, you know, 50% increase in our throughput. So 50% uh, increase in throughput, that's 8K. Do you have any HK displays here in the booth? We do. Oh, you do? We do. Wow. Never at all. Is there any chance we can run 8K from the phone? No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I <laughs> wish. <laughs> that is coming. <laughs> uh, people that are doing phones or whatever are definitely pushing for 8K from the phone. Uh, 4K is coming out of phones now, but 8K is the future. People do want 8K out of their phone. And to do it, they're going to need compression. And we'll talk about compression a little bit more later. But. So what we're showing you here, 8K Dell display. Ooh. This was announced at CES. We have some raw 8K images that we're showing here. Uh, this monitor will be available sometime towards the end of March. Um, and what we're showing here is using Alienware uh, Notebook that has the display dot, DisplayPort 1.4 capabilities. So we're driving this using a single cable. Off-the-shelf, standard DisplayPort cable you can buy anywhere. No specialized cable, and now you're getting 8K at 30 hertz. If uh, we had uh, a desktop system here with two ports, we could drive 8K 60, but we would need two cables but they would still be the thin, small cables. So what's the bandwidth? Bandwidth here is you're doing 8.1 gig per lane. There are four lanes, so it's 32, 32.4. Nice. And so that's, these are products, like I said, this will be available within a month. This is it going to be affordable? Through. I believe they've targeted $5,000 for this display. For the 8K, that's pretty awesome. So the images you see on here now, uh, actually, the person who built this booth for us had a uh, Nikon D80 camera. And so he had been taking raw 8K images, but he had never been able to see them. Like 32 megapixels, basically. Yes, yeah. like but he couldn't see them, yeah. right? Because he had no way to display it. So this was the first time he had ever seen the images in full 8K. So he was amazed to see the quality of the images that his camera was taken for. This is the same issue that everybody has. Everybody is taking pictures higher than 8 megapixels. You can right. never see the quality. No. You're never going to print it out and you no. don't have more than 4K display. No. So So this is... There it is. There it is. Right and there. this is a 4K demo? This is... This, that one? this one is 4K HDR. So H, many TVs have HDR now, but there aren't a lot of devices that can actually drive HDR to the set, right? So what we're doing here is we have an AMD graphics card using DisplayPort. Uh, we're using DisplayPort then to an HDMI, DP to HDMI active adapter, because the TV is HDMI. So we're seeing full 10-bit color here using uh, uh, an AMD graphics card. So we can actually, with DisplayPort, get to full HDR uh, using DisplayPort to uh, HDMI adapters. Uh, so you can see the content uh, on your television or whatever you might, type of display you might have. Nice. So uh, a lot of display ports has to do with compression, right? And uh, you have a partner over there that's right. working on that? Yes, And we what's do. the latest with that? Uh, it's called Display Stream Compression, and uh, the, they've updated sort of how they're doing that. So I will let uh, Stefan tell you a little bit about uh, the compression. Um, I, I'll just on the front end, I will say Visa has agreements with HDMI, MHL, and MIPI to also use this same algorithm, compression algorithm, uh, with uh, products that are built to those standards as well. Awesome. So, hello. So, we, we met last year, and so what happened since last year? Yeah, we met last year. Uh, last year we had the uh, uh, HD demo, and now we have upgraded to 4K demo. And uh, just to show how the, the, the quality we can uh, carry with this compression. So, let's go on the other side right here. Okay. So you have a 4K video running right now? Yeah, it's a 4K display with 4K video and a 4K image. And it's we're switching between the source image and the reconstruct one. So we cannot see really a difference in the uh, in the reconstruct picture when you see the SC output. And uh, as it is 4K and uh, we have a new uh, demo uh, demonstration uh, platform, we also run everything on DisplayPort to show that it really works well. So the laptop is driving a uh, true uh, mini display port to this card. We're doing a compression, decompression, and display port to the monitor. All right. 
last year uh, version uh, 1.2 of the standard was announced to support uh, more of the TV, dig digital TV standards. So we already have some uh, customer interest and uh, we're uh, in the phase of completing the, our version of the IP to support this uh, uh, release of the standard 1.2. And uh, we're also involved in the advanced DSC uh, task group, which is developing the next generation of compression. So direct stream compression and... Dis uh, display stream compression. Uh, display stream compression. Uh, compression. And uh, so this is about how do, you, how do you develop the next generation? What, what do you have to think about? To, to, what, what is the target? Well, it's, uh, you know, uh, 8K to support and uh, other new uh, resolution. Uh, reduce, uh, try to get uh, more compression, uh, higher rate, and uh, reduce the cost at the same time for the implementation. So uh, there's a lot of uh, of thing to do and see uh, how it can be realized to uh, be implemented in hardware uh, of uh, the most efficient way. So uh, what is the hardware that runs on? Like, mm -hmm. uh, uh, how do you run this? Does it use a lot of performance a lot of hardware is used uh, required yeah actually we uh, for the 4k we have upgrade our platform to uh, Xilinx ultra scale uh, platform this is the FPGA so this is FPGA but the main uh, uh, customer they are integrating our IP into their chips so they are chip maker or chip manufacturer like uh, Qualcomm or LG electronics and you have uh, for the decoder part all the uh, uh, display manufacturer, which are uh, a lot of them are based in uh, Asia, and that's an ARM chip, it's on an chip. SOC. And you, are, where are you in the SOC? Well, uh, the the chips uh, which are developed uh, in these days are uh, system in a chip. It means that people buying IP or piece of uh, functionality from different uh, supplier. Let's say they need a USB port. They, say they need a processor and they need a DSC interface. Then they ship, they, they shop around, put all this together, <laughs> uh, validate that it works well, and then uh, go into projection of, of a chip. It's more complex than this, but it's in a few words that's how it works. But does your code run on the CPU, on the DSP, on the GPU, or where do you run? The encoder run on the graphical uh, uh, processor. On the GPU. Yeah, on the GPU and uh, the decoder runs in the display interface chip. All right, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's fully smooth, fully optimized, and you can do even better? Will you keep well, updating, or what do you, what do you need to well, do? Well, we, as I said, we work on uh, version 1.2 is almost complete. Uh, Advanced DSC, we are part of the committee which are developing the standard. Uh, we have over 20 uh, license. Uh, Licensee, actually, uh, we have new market that we develop uh, the, uh, an FPGA version of the encoder to drive the display of the manufacturer that when they want to test their equipment. So that's a new market also going on. Uh, also in automotive, because there's a lot of cabling in the car, the people want to uh, reduce the number of uh, cab uh, cable in a car because every year there's more display and cameras added to uh, into the car and we'll get to I think something like 13 and uh, 15 in a few years uh, so there's our new markets and uh, new opportunities coming on and mm. we uh, we're drive leading the way to get uh, our uh, products into uh, this market and make the most of it and the most performance for the uh, the people Thank you.